Hey guys, Carl from Purple Moose Plays. Today I'm going to be taking a preview look at a prototype copy of the cooperative game Leviathan Wilds from designer Justin Kempinen and Mooncrab Games. As I said, this is a cooperative game in which you find yourself in the role of climbers, traveling the world in search of these giant leviathons that have sort of been overcome by some kind of sickness and destroyed the world. And it is your job to sort of destroy these crystals that have bound these leviathons, healing them and freeing them and ultimately saving the world. Now, Justin Kempinen is a name that I wasn't very familiar with, so maybe you aren't either. But after doing a little bit of research, it turns out he's somebody who's been involved in lots of sort of narrative and story campaign writing kind of stuff in games like Descent Second Edition, Imperial Assault, and recently Pandemic Legacy Season Zero, all of which were games that really did excite me and had some really great sort of narrative story built into them. So that is very exciting going into this. Disclaimer, I was given a prototype copy of this game for preview purposes, but as always, I will offer my own honest opinions as best as possible. With that said, let's head down to the table to see how the solo mode plays or realistically how the regular co-op mode plays, and then I'll meet you back up here to let you know what I think. Before I get into setup, I just want to remind everybody that this is a prototype copy of the game. So all of the components that you see on screen are prototype components and they should not be used as sort of representation of the final game. With that said, let's go ahead and get into setup of the game. To set up a solo game of Leviathan Wilds, begin by choosing your Leviathan and opening the Leviathan book to that page. For this playthrough, I spoke with the publisher and they gave me a few ideas of what I might record, and I've decided from that list to record the Collector Leviathan. So we'll start off by placing the Collector out on the table. Now as I do this setup, I am going to be sort of placing things in strange places just to fit everything onto camera without having to zoom too far out. And the next step of setup is to continue setting up Leviathan. So we're going to place out this rage track. Now normally I would place this rage track down below the Leviathan, but there will be cards that get placed below this and it's not really gonna fit on the screen. So for this playthrough, I will place that over here at the top of the screen. So we've got some space for those cards and then we've got plenty of space for our own player area. And then before setting up the rest of the Leviathan, we should take the story card from that Leviathan, read the story, and then look for any scenario cards specific to that Leviathan. So for this Leviathan, we are playing collector number eight. Sorry, the Leviathan number eight, which is called the collector. And it says, good Lord, we found the Monarch's Reach. Heard a lot of stories in the guild about this ship. Supposedly the only thing fled the fall of the old kingdom, filled with relics, treasures, and knowledge, you name it. Can't say what might be left of this living legend, what with it perched on the back of a giant crab, but we're about to find out. On the back of that card is a sort of story that goes with the end of the game, so I'm going to just set that off screen over here, and I'll pull that back out should we be successful in this scenario. We're then going to take the scenario card for this specific Leviathan and follow the additional setup instructions in addition to the normal setup instructions so I'm going to put this down for a minute, set up the normal setup, and then we'll come back to here to refer to what these things are going to do. So I'm going to set that right here for right now, and we'll come back to that in just a minute. Then to continue setting up normal setup for each Leviathan, each Leviathan will have five cards. We're going to give those five cards a shuffle, and then we're going to place them out down here under this board like this. And these are sort of going to be the, the AI or the brain of the Leviathan and what it's going to be doing on each turn. And the difficulty level for the Leviathan is also going to be set up on this raid track. For this playthrough, I will be playing on normal difficulty. If we were playing on a regular easy mode or story mode, we place it here on this first zero. On normal, I'll place the tracker on the second zero. There's also a hard and expert mode where we start with one or two cards enraged. And what Cards Enraged means is at the end, sorry, at the start of every round, we're going to turn over or rotate a number of these cards such that the blue side is facing the top equal to the number of cards that are enraged. So if we had one card enraged, we would simply rotate this first card into its enraged position. And that'll make more sense when we get into play. And I start turning over those cards and showing you what they do. Next, to continue setting up the Leviathan, we do need to set up the board itself. 
And there are two main things that we're going to be placing out on every board. Everywhere that you see these kind of mushroom symbols, we're going to be placing out a mushroom token at random. And everywhere you see a crystal, either blue or purple, we're going to be placing a die that's equal to the number set to be equal to the number shown there. Now for this prototype, I have blue dice and white dice, not blue dice and purple dice. So I will be using white for the purple crystals and blue for the blue crystals. So I'm going to go ahead and set all of those up. And then I'll bring out the mushrooms, show you what I mean by those, and we'll set those up as well. All right, so here are all of those dice for the crystals placed out. And just to show you, for example, here we've got a blue crystal three. So I've set a blue die with value three on that space. And next, again, I need to fill in all the mushrooms. These are the mushroom tokens. On the back of each of these tokens is some kind of ability or action that you can take. So I'm just going to shuffle these up, and I'm going to place them out in all of the mushroom spaces. And then we'll place the rest off to the side. So with that, we are set up the normal setup for our Leviathan. But again, for this scenario, we have special setup, which tells me to take one alpha token, one beta token, and one delta token. And we're going to flip those upside down and place them in each A space. Now you'll see on the board this actually says A, B, and C, but that is something that's been updated. Those should all say A. But we're going to take one of each of those relics, turn them over, shuffle them, and put them out randomly in those three spaces. So again, here are those three tokens. We're going to turn those upside down so they all look the same. And then I will randomly place those out on the board like that. And then if we turn that card over that we were looking at for setup, it's going to give us the special rules for the scenario. So it says relics of the old kingdom. So it takes me one action point, and I'll explain what that means when we get into gameplay in just a minute. I can spend one action point to take a relic from the space that I'm at and place it in my play area. And I can hold as many of those as I want to. And the reason it says that is because I'll show you in a minute, but we can normally hold only one mushroom at a time. But these relics are special. We can carry as many as we want to. Then it says any time while I have a relic, I can gain one blight. And I'll explain again what all of these things mean when we get into gameplay. But I can gain one blight to use the effect of that relic. Again, there are three relics. The alpha relic will let me add one at one hit to any strike. The beta relic will let me gain four cards back, increasing my climb or my grip strength. And the delta relic will allow me to move one space in any direction. And it says here, in order for me to win, I must also collect all of the relics in addition to the normal sort of win condition. So I'm going to set that up there just so we remember that. And now that the Leviathan is all set up, let's go ahead and set up our climbers. Now again, I did mention to fit everything on the screen, I will be placing things sort of strangely on the table, but we're going to start by placing out two climber boards. I'm going to stagger them like this, and you'll see why. It's basically just to save some horizontal space so I can have a card here and here without spreading too far out on the screen. But I need space above both of the boards and space on both sides of both of the boards, so that's why I've set it up like this. Now for this game, we are required to choose at least two climbers. There is a true solo mode in this game. The true solo mode does make you control two climbers as well. But the difference is that their decks sort of merge into a single deck. I prefer not to do that simply because I like the sort of interplay of the two characters and how they work with each other in the game. So I will be playing sort of just a standard two-handed two-character playthrough. And for this game, I have chosen to play these two characters, and you'll see why in just a minute. I'm going to be playing with Brick, and I'll explain what all of this means, but we will set it up. I need to place an Iron Grip token in the play area for this character, and I've chosen this character simply because they are the purple character. And that character comes with one character-specific card that I'm just going to set right here for right now. And Brick is basically going to have the special ability that they've got extra grip. So they're going to sort of hold on tighter. And I'll explain what that means mechanically in a minute. But it does mean that I have to set up this specific token for that character. And I'll just set it down here below the board. The other character I will be playing through or playing this game through with today is Cheer. And again, the reason I'm doing that is because they've got a purple thumb. And also purple and green, I like the combination. And this one is actually going to be using mushrooms that aren't on the board, which is why I did leave the mushrooms up here on the table, because they will get used. Normally, they would not once the game gets started, but in this case, they will be. So 
So we'll place Chir out there. And then Chir is actually going to get two character specific cards. So I'll set those over here for right now. And in addition, each character will be receiving the meeple that goes with that character. So here we've got Brick and here we've got Cheer, and I'll just set them on their card for now. But those will get placed on the board in just a minute. In addition to characters, each character needs to choose a class. I did choose these at random, and we are going to be going with the Roughneck class for Brick and the Free Climber class for Cheer. So all that means is I'm just going to set this card off. It doesn't really matter. It's not used. It's just the setup for cheer. But we're going to take these other cards here, and these cards are all cards that specifically work with that class. And we're going to mix the class cards and the character cards together, shuffling those together. And that will be the starting deck, or the only deck, really, for that character with that particular class. So those get set there. Same thing for Brick here. We've got the Roughneck cards. Now the Roughneck cards have a special thing here that says there's a React keyword. And any card that has a React keyword gives me some kind of boosted ability if I play them at the exact minute that I'm reacting to one of the threat cards from the Leviathan. You'll see how that works as we get into play. Again, for right now, that doesn't really matter. We'll just set that off here. And we're going to take those Roughneck cards with the one card from Brick. Shuffling those together again, and that will be my deck for Brick, or Roughneck Brick, like that. To finish setup of the characters, we then have to place out one of these focus tokens, face down for each of the characters, and then set both of their health values to 8, and both of their blight values to 0. And then finally, all that's left for setup is to place out these two sort of targeting markers for the attacks of the Leviathan. And I'll just set those there for right now. We can move things around as needed. And this deck here is the injury deck. There are certain attacks that might cause us to take an injury, and if we do, we will draw randomly from this deck. So I'll set that right there. And then finally, before we get into play, we're going to start by drawing a hand of three cards for each of our climbers, like that. And like that. And then we're going to choose a starting location for the two climbers. And we can see that I can climb up these two legs, these two legs, or this sort of tail piece here. Or no, not tail, sorry, that's a claw right there. So I'm going to start my characters, let's say here and here like that. And we'll say the brick is going first. And like that, we are ready to get into gameplay. A game of Leviathan Wilds is going to play out over a series of rounds. And each round is going to consist of five turns. And we'll be taking turns back and forth between our two characters as we play through a round. And the steps of that turn each round is we're going to reveal the next card in this threat row. We'll take care of whatever that says. We're going to activate the climber whose turn it is. We're then going to activate whatever that card says, which means generally we have some time to sort of react and rearrange things before we get hit by whatever the Leviathan is doing that round. And then we're going to draw back up to three cards. Now there are certain threats you'll see that have special keywords, and I'll explain them as they come out, but some of the cards will attack me before I get a chance to move, and some of the attacks won't target until after we've had a chance to move. But while we're here, let's take a look at the cards, because all of the cards basically have two uses. And the cards you're going to see have a number up here, in the corner with sometimes a symbol below that number. And then down here at the bottom is some kind of action. These actions can be played as a free action at any point, not only on your turn, but on another climber's turn as well. So for example, those threat cards that I was saying that react immediately or don't react until the end, you can still use cards to sort of avoid them if necessary. And I'll show you what some of these do in just a minute, but let me also talk about the numbers. 
every turn we're going to choose one of these cards to slot into our sort of action points area to give us a number of action points for that turn. And the action points are how we're doing most of the things that we're doing in this game. For one action point, we can climb one, which means we can move one space orthogonally on a map space. These spaces that have dotted sort of circles around them are not accessible, those are empty, and if we ever go there, we will fall down. For three AP, we can climb, sorry, we can jump two. And what that means is we can skip one space if we're going orthogonally. Means, for example, if some of these spaces have bad effects, which I'll explain in a minute, I could effectively jump over that space, ignoring that bad effect. But again, instead of moving one, two, that will cost me three AP to jump over. For that jump two, we can also jump diagonally. So I can go from here to here for three AP. Normally it would cost me two to get there. But for example, if I'm in a location where I can't get somewhere, except by jumping, that might be a very good idea or a very good opportunity for me to go straight to a location. Then for a variable number of AP, we can glide. And what glide means is we can move straight down or we can move down in a straight diagonal direction, a number of spaces equal to the number of action points that we spent. So if I move straight down two spaces, I can glide two. But I can also use glide two to move down two spaces diagonally down the board, which is not normally something you can do with a regular climb action. Then for a number of AP, we can also strike, which is how we attack. And the number of action points we spend on the strike is the number of damage points that we're going to do to the crystal. And in order for me to win this game, I do have to smash and destroy all of the crystals on this Leviathan. In addition, we know now that I have to collect all three of those relics for this particular scenario, but every scenario requires me to remove all of the crystals from the board. And to do that again, we're going to strike, and every one action point we spend will decrease the die value by one until it hits zero, in which case it's removed from the Leviathan. The difference here between the white dice and the blue dice, or the purple crystals and the blue crystals, is that the blue crystals are blighted. And blight is sort of another negative damage effect that we're going to take through this game. If I hit a blighted die or blighted crystal, normally I'm going to have to increase my blight level by one for every strike that I make. Not every damage point that I deal, but every attack that I make as an individual attack action. And that's important, I'll pause here for that, because if your health cube and your blight cube ever end up on the same space or cross, you immediately are just removed or killed and removed from the game. And once one of your climbers is removed from the game, all of the other climbers will have one more turn to do whatever they can do before the game is triggered. And that's the way that we're going to lose the game. If one of my characters dies, and the other character cannot defeat the Leviathan on their next turn, we will have been defeated. Now, these last two actions are going to be sort of how we deal with damage to ourselves and negative effects on ourselves. The first one is a rest action, and I'll come back to that in a minute because that's going to be super important and will require a little more explanation. But the next one under that is mend, and mend is simply allowing you to spend one AP to heal one damage. And I can do that as many times as I want, to heal as many times as I want to. So let's come back to this rest action. This deck here, my sort of deck of cards that I have available to me at any given time, is my grip value. And the, as soon as I deal out the last card here, or draw the last card from here, I will have lost my grip, and I will immediately fall from wherever I am until I hit one of these spots that has a white line underneath it. Those are sort of ledges. And anything that I fall through, I will have to deal with. It means these yellow spaces, these red spaces, I will have to deal with. And I'll explain those in just a minute when we get back to that last piece of the card. But that means I need to be constantly keeping an eye on my grip, because if this ever runs out and I'm not standing on a ledge, I will fall down. Now, if I am standing on a ledge when that grip runs out, that's not a problem because I'm standing and I will not get hurt. But the only way we're going to get cards back into our grip normally, without using some special ability, is to be taking the rest action. And to take the rest action, we do need to be standing on one of those ledge spaces, spending two AP, and we will shuffle our entire discard deck or discard pile and place it to the bottom of our deck. 
Now again, there will be some abilities that will allow us to refresh cards in other ways, but that's the only way we can use an action to do that. So coming back to those cards and coming back to the spaces on the board, you'll see that these two cards have a red symbol and a blue symbol here. On the board there are red symbols and yellow symbols. Anytime I enter a red symbol, I will take one damage. Anytime I cross into a yellow symbol, I will discard one card, I will lose one grip. But if the card that we've chosen for our action points that round has that symbol on it, we will ignore all of those symbols on that turn, or at least during that activation. This blue crystal here is going to allow me to ignore taking one blight when I strike a blue crystal. And again, just as a reminder, now that I have explained those symbols, anytime I fall, if I fall through a red space, I will take a damage. If I fall through a yellow space, I will lose a grip. And that's important because we're not only only falling when we lose all our grip cards, but also sometimes the Leviathan might push us. And if they ever push us into an empty space, as soon as we're in that empty space, we will fall until we hit a ledge. And there might be some cards along the way that do allow us to catch back up, and we are always allowed to spend our abilities as we're falling to sort of change columns and make sure we land in safe places. But that is how a fall is going to work. The only other thing we have here is the mushrooms, and that is another free action. We already said that using any ability on the card is a free action. The mushrooms. When I'm in the same space as a mushroom, I can use a free action to see what it is. I can use a free action to take it onto my board and I can use a free action to use that mushroom. But we can only ever carry one mushroom on our, our board. That said, if we're carrying a mushroom and we're on a space with another mushroom, we can use the mushroom at the space where it is without first taking it onto our board. And the final free action we can do is simply to let go. If there's for some reason I want to fall down, if it's faster for me to get somewhere, I can fall for free and fall as normal until I hit a ledge, taking any effects that I pass along the way. So I realize that might be a lot to take in at the moment. That's basically the general flow of the game. Let me explain the abilities on the two sets of cards that I have available to me right now, and then I'll go ahead and get into the first turn. So for my purple character, Brick, again, this is three actions with a Blight protection, or I can use it to add plus one to any climber's strike. Joyride here, five, and protection against damage. Any climber may block two. They can jump equal to the amount blocked. Block means that we're going to prevent taking damage. So I can use this to block an attack from the Leviathan and then jump away from that location. And Daredevil here lets me choose two options. I can climb one, strike one, gain a heart back, or gain one grip back. Anytime we gain one grip back, we gain a random card or number of cards from our discard back to the bottom of our deck. And this says here, react, do all four. Remember, this character has a special ability that if this card is played for an action right when the threat card is being taken care of or, or activated, we get to do something more special. So I can do all of these things if I do it at the same time I'm getting attacked by the Leviathan. And then taking a look at Cheers cards for right now, they say glide up to two, then strike that amount. So I'm basically falling on something and hitting it as I fall, and then stop falling if I have grip. So I can use this to prevent a fall later if I wanted to. Here's a four card. This is the yellow protection I was talking about before. This says potency. I can use the effects of up to two mushrooms that I've already used, but then I remove them from the game, placing them in the box. Let's pause here for a minute to remember Cheer's special ability. First off, Cheer can carry two mushrooms. But also at the start of every round, which happens to be right now, I'm going to draw one mushroom random from the supply, which is a draw one in this case, and we'll place that there. And when Cheer uses a mushroom, instead of removing it from the game like normally would be the case, they're instead going to place it down here because as I showed you, we have a card here that will let them reuse that ability later on. And then finally here, the jump card is simply going to allow any climber to jump to. Now when it says any climber, that means it doesn't have to be the character who's using the card. I could use this to move the other climber out of the way to get away from some kind of threat. All right, so let's go ahead and get into gameplay. We're starting with Brick. 
And the first threat card looks like this. So it says it's attacking the active player, which is Brick. And what that means is we're going to place the red target around Brick. And if Brick is anywhere, well, if any character is any of those spaces shown on this card, they will lose two health. So I want to do my best to get Brick away from that space. And we got lucky because there are two spaces in between us. So I don't have to worry about cheer because cheer is already outside this area of effect. But if I want Brick to not be hurt, they need to move two spaces diagonally or three spaces up to get away from that attack. And I think that's exactly what we're going to do. Yes. I'm going to play this five. And they're going to move like this. One, two, that's red, but we got protection there. Three, four to this die right there. And then I'm going to use my last action. Uh, actually, I'm going to discard this three to add a plus one to their strike. So I've got a strike of one and adding one that does two damage to this. So we drop that down to a four. Now, after activating, we resolve the threat. The threat says anybody in that area loses two health. We manage to get out of that area, so we are safe. Nothing happens. This card gets discarded. We draw back up to three cards. Ooh, here we go. Five, any climber gains five grip. It's a great way to get some cards back. And a five, any climber may block two, then strike equal to the amount blocked. That's pretty cool. And we move into Cheer's turn. So first, check the threat. It says, active, minus two grip or return a relic to an A space without a relic. Well, we don't have any relics to return, so they're going to lose, Cheer's going to lose two cards at the end of this turn unless I rush up to grab a thing just to drop it. I don't think I'm going to do that. Right now I don't mind losing grip, and I can always rest later if I need to. Then, I'm going to, let's aim to get towards this die. I don't think I'm getting there this turn, but we'll see what happens. One, two, three, four, five gets me there. I do have a five, but if I do that, I will hit the grip. Uh, climber may jump two. One, jump, two, three, Hmm. One, two, three, four. That's five to get to the mushroom, actually, not to the die. But that's okay. Any climber may jump to. All right, so I'm going to play. Doesn't matter which four I play. Ah, it does, because that's a five. And I don't really care to end my turn there. We'll see if we can get a red protection later. So I'm going to play this four potency. Whoops, over here. And then I'm going to move one, and from that location I'm going to use this to jump two, which is that diagonal like that. I still have three action points left. One, two. I flip that. Ooh, that's a protection from Blight on a later attack. That's great to have. All right, so we did one, jump, two, three. And you know what? Why not? I'm going to do that four and take one damage, because it's early and I don't really care too much. Resolving the threat, I lose two cards in my grip. That gets dropped there, and I draw two more cards, just like that. All right, next. This one says the Leviathan is aiming for the character with most health, which right now is Brick, because Cheer just took a damage. They're going to lose one health and get pushed down one. So remember, I have to be careful if they're pushed down into a space that doesn't have a spot, they will fall. But otherwise, one health is not that big a deal. So, we are going to smash that crystal and then, hmm, I don't have any protection from yellow. One, two, three, four. 
All right, then I'm going to play that five there. And that means I'm going to smash that crystal one, two, three, four, and I get one more movement. And I'm going to go... If I stay there, I'm going to get pushed down and I'm going to fall to there. Which isn't horrible because there's nothing in between me. If I go there, I'm going to fall and get hurt, which I don't really want to do. And realistically, I'm trying to get to the left. Uh, hmm. I think I'm just going to stop there. Yeah, I'm going to stop there. And I'm going to fall, but that's okay. I'm going to take one damage and fall to there. This gets trashed. I get one more card. That's my turn. Resolving the threat, or sorry, drawing the threat for the next. Cheer turn, says active player, minus two hearts or return a relic to an A space without a relic. Again, we don't have any relics, but we can get there. But it's going to take an action to get there. Huh. One, two, three, four, five gets me there. I'm going to do this. I'm going to strike one with this card. It says if it played after a jump or a glide, I strike two, but that's fine. We didn't. I'm going to use that for a strike one to knock that to a two. Because then I'm going to use this five to go one, two, three, four, and take that alpha token. Because I can then return that alpha token to that space and not take the damage. This goes there. I draw two more. One, two, and now I need to be careful because I only have one card left. So on the next turn, I know that if I don't rest, I am going to end up in trouble. But that's okay. We go back here again. All right, this one is interesting. This one is actually targeting both of us. So we're both getting targeted, leftmost and rightmost. So leftmost is Brick, rightmost is this guy. Now we've got a problem here because the rightmost is all around him gets attacked except the space to his left, but the space to his left is an empty space, which means if they move left to avoid this, they will fall. Then, Brick has a space to its right is, for, is fine, but also up higher, more than one space away. So I'm not worried about Brick. If they get caught in this, they will take two damage. I want to see first if I can get Cheer out of the way. And, ooh, this is perfect. Cheer has a card called Vault that's going to let them move up one and over two. And up one and over two will get avoid that spot. And it's going to actually put me in a great place for my next turn anyway. So I will do that. So he's going to jump there and get out of the way. And now Brick's turn. I want to kind of make my way up to this blighted crystal here. And to do that, hmm, block to, no, I need to get up there. And we're getting a little bit low on cards. So what I'm actually going to do is... Yeah, I'm going to play this 4 for its ability. This is not a react because I'm not doing it on time. So I only get to choose two things. So I'm going to choose climb 1. Yeah, we're going to choose climb 1 and gain 1 heart. Actually, not even. We're just going to gain a heart. Because I'm going to play this 5. And I don't know if that's smart, but I'm going to play this 5. And I'm going to rest for two, which means I get these cards back again. And those go back underneath my deck like that. That's two, and I still have three left, and for three I will jump to there, because that clears me above that spot. We don't get hit. So that's the end of that round. We are safe. I draw two cards back again, which is fine, because I just rested. And that's the end of the round. So at the end of the round, all of these get reshuffled. So this cube moves forward one more. 
cards get played back out again like this. And then because it says one here, we are going to turn this card like that. It is now enraged. It means that's going to be a more powerful version of that card. Yes. Then we check our threat for this round. Now you see an enraged card. Oh, great. This is an enraged version of what we just saw, except now instead of damage only, we're getting one blight and one damage. And blight is not healable, which is sad. So I want to try and get away from that as possible. He's there. He's there means, oh, you know what, that crystal should be where I am, not lower. All right, so I need to drop or climb to get away from that. That's okay. I think we've got this. First off, purple guy. Let's see what we got that we can do. Strike two, suffer another threat, block one, or sidestep. He is the leftmost, so if he just sidesteps one card, that will be fine. And this says react, draw one card. So I'm going to wait and do this as a reaction, and I will get a card in addition to avoiding that threat. So that's great. Now we're going to take this guy's turn. And what we're going to do is this. I'm going to use this mushroom, draw one, to take one more card. Ah, uh, no, I'm not. Hold on. Not yet. I'm going to, yeah, that's fine. Okay, I'm going to play this four for my action points. And I'm going to use my blight protection with three action points to get rid of that crystal so I don't take any blight. Then I'm going to use that to draw one card. And then I kind of wish that I hadn't used the four and that I'd only used the three, but that's okay. We're going to fall because I just ran out of cards, but that's fine because there's a ledge there, and that ledge puts me out of the way of this attack, which is great. I have one action point I will use to heal, and that's the end of my turn. And then again, using... Whoops, this should have been discarded after the last round. Using this as a reaction, I will move one space to the right, which does avoid that attack. It also gets them one extra card. He draws back up to three, but there are no cards here, and they've already fallen, and they're on a ledge, so nothing happens. And that is the end of that turn. And then before moving into Brick's turn, we do need to discard that card. Also, I did just remember, at the start of the round, his ability is that he should have drawn a Mushroom token, but he already had two and couldn't hold anymore, and I did end up using both of those tokens, so for right now, we're going to say that he didn't do that or he chose not to because he didn't want to get rid of any of his other stuff. So then, moving to Rick's turn, we reveal this card, and it says, active, minus two hearts, or return a relic. I think even if we get a relic this turn, I'm not going to return it, because two health is not really that big a deal when I have no blight and I have full health. So let's see what's going to happen. I want to get up here, Mushroom, I want to get up here to this, but first I should probably take care of this Blighted Crystal over here. So I'm going to figure out the best way to get there, and I'd like to not use this one, because this one is a protection for Blight, and if I can get over there on the next turn, I could then be... Oh, but this is also Strike to React, Ignore Blight Terrain during that strike. Okay, that I'm holding on to then. One, two, three. Huh. Got a lot of grip. Don't really want to waste the extra turn. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just going to, right now, play this four. Hold on. One, two, three. Then I could use that to get over there already, but then I take a damage and I lose a grip. Is that a problem, though? Uh, but this is ignore Blight during that strike two. And he needs four to take that out. And that's a four attack. So yeah, let's plan two rounds. And I'm going to play this four like that. 
to just simply go one and then two, three, four to jump there. And that's the end of my turn. I'm going to just stay there. Because my plan is to come over here on the next turn and then the following turn to smash that crystal, I hope. But let's see what happens. This hits me for two damage. One, two. And that's that. We draw one more card back up to three and green takes their turn. Next, active. Same card we just saw except now grip instead of hearts. They don't have any grip. They will have full grip in just a minute. They're playing a three. And I'm going to play the three with the yellow to protect me from losing grip. One, two gets me these cards back again. And then three moves me there. That gets placed. Well, it doesn't, not yet. We're going to lose two grip. One, two over there. And this gets dropped. And we draw two more cards like that. Good. Purple's turn. We are getting attacked. They are the active player. So we basically just have to move far or lose two hearts. And let's see. Diagonal over is not safe. I need to move over three. There's no way to do that. Do I have enough cards? Yeah, I'm good for a little while because what I'm going to do is... Uh, diagonal over, yeah. I'm going to take a damage, but that's okay. I'm going to play three like that. No, not there. Like that for my action points. And then I move one, two. And I'm gliding one means I glide down to where that crystal is. But I do take one damage for doing that. Like that. And that's the end of my turn, but I do get missed by that attack. Let me draw one more card. And discard this one like that. And back to cheer. Person with the most health, which is cheer because they're full, lose a health and push down one. Okay. I'd like to get up. I wouldn't mind picking up this mushroom. I definitely want to use this relic. Yeah. So then we are going to play this five. It's just lets me move five. I'm going one, two, three to take that. Uh, cards are looking a little bit okay. Hmm. Yeah, one, two, three to take that. I've got two left. I don't have any healing that needs to happen, so I might as well just go four, five to get there, which does lose me one more grip, but that's fine. Ah, hold on. No, I don't like that. I don't like that. One, two. I changed my mind because I'm getting pushed down, and that's going to make me fall all the way here and lose more cards along the way. I don't want that. Oh. It's not great, but I'm going to use this glide card. Because I can glide one to here, and now I get pushed down to the platform, which is good. So that goes there. I do lose one health from that. And we draw two more cards. It means we are down to one card. So we may rest again, but we'll see what happens. That's the end of the round. That slides up. We reshuffle. And that means Cheer gets one new mushroom, which is a ooh, minus one blight, which is cool. They don't have any blight yet, but that's rare to be able to heal blight. So I like to see that. These first two cards are enraged. And then regular. Brick's turn. We start with the enraged active and next. That means both of us lose two health or return a relic to an A space. Well... Don't want to return that relic because I don't want to have to go back and get it again. So let's do some fighting and so on. Uh huh. Don't like it. They may have to fall again because 
One, two, three, four. They need to heal a lot. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to play this four. And I'm going to only use two to hit this crystal. Like that. And then the other two will be heal. And then as a reaction to that, I am playing this daredevil, which lets me climb one. I'm not going to. Uh, but strike's going to get me a thing. We're going to draw two and fall. You know what? Let's do it this way. I changed my mind. We're playing this three attack, and we are using the whole attack to get down to one. Again, protected against blight. Then, as a react, I'm playing this one, which lets me do all of the things. Which means I am going to strike that one, and we will take one blight. But I do still have two damage that I didn't heal this time. But I gain one from there. I gain one card from here. I'll put that under there, like that. And then I am going to play this card as a move to move them there. Because, first off, they're going to take two damage, which is not great. And then they're going to draw one, two, three cards like that. But they fall, but they don't fall because they're on a ledge. So we're safe. Not perfect, but not bad. And this guy also is just going to take two damage, which is not great, but we can start healing. If we pause for a second, next round, or next turn, I guess, the active player is going to get hit with two blight and an injury. I can't let that happen. So he gets that right there. I need to get three up or two diagonal to be safe. That's easy, because I wouldn't mind getting that mushroom anyway. They are running out of cards. Uh-huh. Well, I'm going to use that five as a five. And just simply go one, two, three. Checking that mushroom is a glide two. That's cool. One, two, three. My alpha, remember, I can always get one extra strike. I'm not going to right now. I'm going to go four and take a health for five. What else do I have? Use a mushroom, get plus two, or jump. But I don't want to do that because I'm about to fall right now. So first things first, I don't get hit, yay. I draw that, and I lose that, and I fall, but I don't go anywhere because I'm on a ledge. So that's good for me. Next, Brick takes their turn, active, minus two grip, or return a relic to a space. I'm not returning anything. And they've got the ability to save one grip. I haven't used this yet, but what this does is anytime they're forced to lose a grip, if I flip that, I can put one of those cards in my hand instead of the discard pile. Then, wouldn't mind getting that mushroom. My cards are over here. One, two, three, four, five, six cards there. Hmm. One, two, three, get it. Four, five gets me there. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to play this five to get five cards back again. One, two, three, four, five, like that. And that gets discarded, and I'm playing this other five as my movement. Let me go one, two, three to take this mushroom. Ooh, a plus a heart. We're going to use that instantly. Take a health. Then I'm going for five to be at the space with that relic for next time. Cool. Then I am going to minus two cards, but I'm going to save one. So we'll see what happens. Uh, four or jump. I like to have that. So we're going to save that one, flipping that. This one gets discarded. That's the other nice card, but that's fine. This goes here. And we draw our third card, and now it's Cheer's turn. 
This is that one where they're both targeted for two damage. Like that. And, yeah, I'm not worried at all about Cheer because they'll be moving far regardless of where I go. Brick needs to move one space to the right. Uh, no. Okay, then, Brick is simply going to use this card here. Ooh, you know what? That's real nice. Because this space is safe. If I go up and over two, yeah, hold on. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to end up reacting to that so I can go to this ledge right there instead. It means I do have to come back for the relic later, but that's fine. I can get over here and get rid of that bladed crystal first. So let's take Cheer's turn. Cheer is going to play four. Uh, I want to play this one. Using two to rest. Like that. Then in the middle of that, I'm going to jump using this dino, means up two and over one. So up two, whoops, one, two, and over one gets me there. And I still have two action points left. So I will do three to heal one and four to go up to that space, which does make me lose one card. Now I'm reacting like that to put them on that space there. Hold on a minute. It looks like I didn't have... This should have been discarded. That's one, two. I should have one more card like that. They're safe there. Yep, that triggers. Neither one of them gets hit, so yay. This gets discarded. We draw two more cards like that. All right. Then, last... Attack, the person with the most health, which is cheer, will lose one and get pushed down one. I don't care about that right now. Yeah, I don't care about that right now. I want to focus on purple guy over here. And we're simply going to spend this four here to rest and heal twice. So we're going to heal two. And shuffle. And now they're tied for most health. So I could push them instead. But I don't know if that's a good idea. Losing one health. Yeah, why not? Because then they can stay where they are and do some damage there. And that's cool. All right, then. That's fine with me. They're going to fall one. Safety. That gets discarded. They draw two more, and they do take one damage from that card. Like that. That's fine. That's the end of the round. Which means we get one more mushroom for our mushroom guy, but we have two already. We've got a plus one AP. I'd rather have a plus one AP than a minus one blight, since they don't have any blight yet anyway. Uh, I don't know where this gets discarded to, because they didn't use it. So I'm going to discard it back up here, and we'll just say it's out of the game. Although I guess for a free action, I'm allowed to place a mushroom. So I'm going to stick that mushroom there, in that spot. This goes to three now. We place out one, two, three enraged, and two normal. Flip that. Active and next. Both of them are going to lose two health or have to return a relic. I'm not returning any relics, so they're both going to take some damage. That's fine with me. It's Cheer's turn. And I am going to fight that thing. Uh huh. All right. And I'm going to use. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to use this four and this one AP right away. Two, do four damage there, and I can pick that other mushroom back up again. And my last AP is to move there and look at this mushroom, which says stop falling. I don't really care about that, but it puts me in a good location right now. They both lose two health. 
which is getting to be a problem for brick. Uh, but there's no block. And then, huh. Oh no, that jump is not what I need. Okay, nothing. That gets discarded. This gets come up here like that. Next, active. Okay, this is a double blight on brick. We need to get away from that. And moving up three is good enough. So, I'm going to play taunt this card right here as a three. To simply go one, two, oh, wait a minute. Nope. I'm not. I was going to be silly, but I'm not. Okay, I'm going to play this strike two, not strike two, this four with a damage protection. Because then I can go one, two, three, protect myself from that, and heal one for my fourth thing. That's all they're doing this turn. Yeah, that's it. So they don't take the thing because they escaped from it. That's fine. That gets discarded. We get one card. Next threat, least blight, which is them with zero. They're going to get pushed one, and they're getting a blight. Push one means they're going to try and push them into an empty space if they can. And then if they can't, they'll push them into a damaged space. And then if they can't, they'll push them down. Well, that's going to be a problem, because if I get there... They're going to push, sorry, if I get there, they're going to push me empty, and I'm going to fall all the way back to here. Hmm. Do I care? Take a blight. Take another blight. Heal one blight. Oh, that's bad. Huh. Hmm, hmm, hmm. That's not good. All right, so what we're actually going to do is we're going to do some craziness here. I'm going to play this four with protection. And they're going to go one, two. Then I'm jumping two. It means I go diagonal to that one. And I spend my last two to take out that crystal, which does get me one blight, but I'll instantly spend my thing to lose that blight. And then... I'm going to let go and fall to that ledge. Because according to the direction, the rules, and if I'm wrong here, then that's my fault. But anytime that there's a tie on a decision, it's my decision. So they're going to take plus one blight and then push to an empty space. So they're actually going to push them up to that empty space because that's my decision. I have two options and they fall back down to that ledge. If that's a mistake, I'm sorry. If I just made things easier than it should be, I'm sorry. Actually, you know what? Just to avoid cheating, I'm going to do this instead. I'm going to use that glide to, to glide to here. Then they're going to push me into that open space and I'll fall onto that ledge instead. There we go. That way I know I'm safe. I haven't done anything wrong. This card is discarded. I draw two more. One, two, like that. Next card. Both targeted again. Then, he's going to take two damage, or i got to get out of the way, but if I get out of the way, I'm getting hit. Mm -hmm. Ah, but I can block if I use that card and strike the amount blocked. Ooh, that's actually going to be nice. Okay, that's what I'm doing then. And i got to figure out how to move them, but I'll do that in just a second. I'm going to play this for four Blight Free. And I'm going to hit for three. So that gets knocked down to two. And I do not take a blight for that. But that's that there. Then, let me see how they get out of the way first before I take any damage for anything. Huh. I need to go far away to get away from that. Glide up to two. I don't want to glide. Any climber may climb one. They'll have to take a damage to avoid two damage. Is that worth it? It's worth it. 
Or I trash a card and I can jump up and over to there. Which is not great, but then I could glide and fall. Yeah, let's do that. All right. So I'm going to discard a card. This three will get discarded. Discarding a card lets me then jump to a green space. So I'm going up one, two, three, and over one. A three? That puts me all the way up there. And then I have to draw a card, and then I fall. No, never mind. Undo that. Oh, okay, let's do that instead. I'm gonna jump diagonal for free. And then I'm gonna play this one and it's sad, but it says glide up to two. So I'm gliding into that ledge right there, which does get me out of the way. So he's safe. Then this guy's not safe, but I'm playing this card to block two and then I can strike the amount blocked. So that gets killed. I do take one blight from that, but that's okay. That is that turn like that. Cool. That was purple's turn. That gets discarded. We draw two more cards up like that. And the next is the active player who is cheer is going to lose two grip or return a relic. Yeah, I'm not returning any relics because I need them. We're going to stop there. Cheer has to use this three card. We're going to use that to refresh and gain one health. Those get placed and then we do lose two cards like that. That's the end of the round again. Which means this goes up to four. Cheer gets another mushroom plus two health. That's awesome. Those get shuffled up. And this time we're placing four enraged and that's a normal one like that and back to brick active end next we're both losing two grip not great but not bad because what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna play this five yeah, that's fine. To drop for free, landing there. I'm resting, which gets me this card, this back. These get shuffled. And get placed there. That's one, two, three, four, five. Puts me back to full health. Now, this should have been discarded. Sorry, I should have drawn back to three here. One, two, three. And then they're going to lose two like that, which is sad, but they're not in a bad place right now anyway. He's going to lose two, and I get to save one with this grip. I'm going to let that four go bye-bye. And we'll save this next card like that. Awesome. Means I don't draw anymore because I'm already at three. That's the end of his turn. Next turn. Active and next. Both of us are getting hit for two health or returning a relic. I'm not returning any relics. At least not for now. Then, yeah. I want to play one of these fours. I don't really care which one. First off, I'm going to use that two health to gain two health. I'll play this regular four, which goes one, two to take that, which is the delta. Let's me move for a blight. That was one, two. Uh, sorry, before I did that, I wanted to rest. So one, two, three, four to take the delta. And that's that. Then I could use mushrooms that I've already used. But where I am right now, I don't need to do that. Although, kill a blight and get an AP to move might not be a bad idea. You know what? Let's do that. 
I'm going to play that. I'm going to use remove a blight and one AP. Uh, no, I'm not. I lied because I want to be able to use that for the fight the next turn, possibly. All right, then that's that. He loses two health. He loses two health. This gets discarded. We draw one more. Awesome. Next. Okay, we're both targeted again. And we're going to get a Blight and a Damage. I might just take the hit for green, because I don't want them going anywhere. But let's see what happens. Purple. I'd like to get down to this Relic, but I would also wouldn't mind going up to those other Crystals. We've got five. Potentially. Three. Three. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to play that five to jump for three, four, five, and check this mushroom, which is a, ooh, pretend, prevent a damage. And they are out of the way of this one, too. So that's okay. And for this guy, could glide to. Means all the way down there again. You know what? That's not a bad idea, because I can come down here and get that. And I'm going to use, yeah, I'm going to use this potion. It's not great, but I'm going to use to get rid of one of those Blight and Glide 2. Because their Glide 2 is 1, 2 right there. They're safe. Cool. Those go away. Next active player is Purple. Oh no, that was purple. Active player is green. And I didn't use that. This should get discarded. This should get flipped over. Alright. Then I'm getting two blight and an injury if this hits. I don't want that to happen at all. One, two. Where can I go that I don't get hit? Down diagonal there. When I use a mushroom, I don't have any mushrooms. One, two, three, four, five. I got lots of cards. Yeah, you know what? Forget it. I'm just running. I'm gonna play. Whoops. I'm gonna play that five for its action, which just means one, two, three, four, five. I'm back to the crystal. I'm safe. He's also safe. We're good. That goes away. Draw two more. Like that. Okay. Next turn. Most health right now. We're tied. We'll see if that's true, but it's going to be a minus one and a push one down. Push one down is not really that big a deal. We're getting not too bad on cards, but low-ish. And I think... Yeah, I'm just going to play this four. To go one, two, three, four. Right, one, two, three, four. I'm safe there. That gets discarded. We're tied for health, so whoever wants to get pushed can get pushed. I'm going to let this guy get pushed down and take a damage. The Blight's a little scary, but we should be okay. And I want them to start their turn with that crystal. So we're going to stop there. Round ends. They take another card like that. Getting close, but not close enough. And we're completely enraged at this point. Five like that. We turn over the first one. Ah, Cheer gets a mushroom, which is prevent a grip problem. Then, least blight is Cheer. Is going to take a blight and get pushed towards an empty hole, which is fine. That's majorly okay. All right, then I'm going to play this four because I like those other ones for their movement abilities. Play that four like that, which is simply going to wipe out that four crystal, which gets one more blight for them, which is okay. And then, like I said, I don't really care because 
they're going to take a blight and they're going to get pushed to an empty space. The only empty space there is up, but that means they fall to here, which is fine. Okay, that goes bye-bye. They get a card. All right, so purple has to take out these two crystals up here, and he needs to get that extra relic, and if we can do that, we do win this game. So let's see what happens. Brick. Oh, no, both of them are losing two grip. That's the end of Brick. Oh, brick can get to a place. That's fine with me. They've got three to lose. They're on a ledge. I'm okay with that. We're not losing relics. Then, Brick goes. Yeah. Okay, Brick is using this forward to jump. To there. They're going to jump here. Check that. It's a plus two grip. I like it. I don't need this. Because then I'm playing my card. They're going to fall though, so that's fine. We're going to play this three here to go one, two, three, which shuffles those back in. And also reactivates the iron grip token. Means they lose two cards. One, two. This guy loses two cards, but I get to save something. Uh, no, I'm going to let that go away. I'm going to save whatever this one is. Yay. This gets discarded. I get one more card. And we move to the next cheer turn. Both players losing two hearts. That's not great. I don't like this. But it's not the end of the world. Oh, any climber may block too. Look at that. Okay. They're safe. They are okay, but they might heal a little bit. All right, then. Yeah, I don't care. All right, I'm playing the five. which is going to be two to rest, like that, three, four to heal up, five to move one over. This shouldn't be there anymore. They lose two hits, they're blocking two. Done. Back to purple, ah, hold on, this gets discarded, they get a card, back to brick, active. Like that. Okay. I don't want to take any damage. Means. Yeah, okay, we're good. I need to get two diagonals. So if I can get to this crystal, we're safe. So I'm going to play. One, two, three, four, five. I don't have a five. I only have a four. Hold on. What do I have over here? Climber can glide. Ooh, any climber can jump too. That's perfect. Yeah, okay, good. So we're going to use that. They jump two to this corner here like that. Then I play this four to go one, two, three, four, plus one to any climber strike gets rid of that crystal, and we are safe. That goes there. I take three cards, and before we get into any serious trouble, I will use that plus two grip to add two cards back in. And we'll take those two cards back into our deck like that. Next is Cheers' turn. Okay, we've got that leftmost, rightmost situation again. And the damage we're getting is plus one blight, plus one health. I don't like it. Well, I can block the damage. He's easy. Wait, hold on. Their leftmost and rightmost doesn't matter. Any climber gains, strike two. Any climber may glide one. Glide one doesn't help. Oh, wait a minute. All right, that's what's going to happen. 
Ah, hold on. Careful, quick. This says Swift, this says delayed. Swift means this is not targeted. Or sorry, one of them is targeted and instantly attacked. The other one is delayed, which means this doesn't target until, and I'm sorry if I did this wrong, I don't remember if this one had been enraged yet or not, and if it has, I will fix that in subtitles later, but one of them is gonna get attacked currently, one of them is going to be delayed, and that means they won't get targeted until they've stopped moving. So I'm gonna say that Swift is happening to purple. Yes, because then they're just gonna let go and fall to there, losing one grip. It's not ideal, but it doesn't really hurt me too much. Now, the delayed means this is not there. This will get played wherever he ends the turn, and then I need to react to that. So, I am gonna play this four, means one, two, three to pick up the last relic, and then I'm gonna say four to heal. Because now this gets placed here, and I'm simply just going to let go, because I don't have any reason not to. They let go and fall all the way back down here to the water, taking one damage on the way. We move into the next round, which means we do get one more mushroom over here, which is a block two for them. That goes away. Everything again is enraged. And we need to figure out how to get purple up to that top crystal to smash it in order to win this scenario because we do have all the relics. So let's see what we can do with purple. But first, let's see what we're dealing with. Active and next, both lose two hit points. I've got a block two again, so I'm okay with that. They've also got a block two, so I'm okay with that. Now, uh, hold on. This goes away. They draw two more. Any climber can climb one. How many cards do I have here? One, two, three, four. All right, so I'm gonna use this four as my thing this turn. And I will just do one, two, three, four to get there. Then I'm gonna block two. And then I'm gonna gain five cards. So these cards come back. One, two, three, four, five is all of them. Goes there. That goes there. That goes there. So they blocked. They're also blocking, so they don't take any damage either. Next turn is Cheer's turn. All right, here we go. This is where we're gonna have a problem. Uh, hold on, this is swift and delayed. The only person who's moving is green. But Swift is going to hit me right now. Uh, hold on, they didn't draw their cards. One, two, and three. Huh, cool. They got their block two back again. So I don't care. They're staying where they are. So we'll take care of that right now. We block two. That's fine. Means his is delayed. But realistically, I don't care if they take two damage. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a minute. This one's even better. This one says block two and jump the amount blocked. So I'm going to jump right there. Yeah. I'm going to jump right there. That's great. So he's delayed. And I don't really care what they're going to do. I'm just going to say they play that three. They heal twice <clears throat> and do nothing. Then they get targeted, and yeah. Uh, hold on, that's block and one and blight one. So that's fine, they got one blight. And yeah, he's not gonna do anything. So he takes one damage and one blight, and that's that. That goes away, they draw a card. We're flipping one more. Active is here. But it's not gonna matter because, watch this, I play my five. For three I jump, for two I smash, and we have now successfully beaten the collector. We've got all three relics in possession, we've cleared all the crystals from the board, 
And the final story says, Conclusion The monster chased after us for a bit, trying to get its stuff back. Probably didn't stop to ask. I mean, I get it. Wish we could keep at least one of the relics. Handy in a tight spot, but we know the drill. They're unstable, important for research. Needed to outfit new climbers with tools and gears, blah, blah. So that's that. We win. And the funny thing is, I didn't use my relics at all. They would have been pretty useful, but again, they take blight to use, and I tend to avoid blight whenever possible. But whatever we did, it worked because we did win. Now, this is normally where I take a look at components and inserts and so on, but as you see, this is all prototype stuff. A lot of the cards say placeholder art. All of these sort of pieces are 3D printed on a personal printer. I can't really say much other than I really love the look of this game. The design, the iconography is very easy to understand. The character design, the artwork here, especially the Leviathans, and those I will show you in just a second. But in addition to that, I did say these are 3D printed, so I can't really mention them. They're a really cool idea. They do really work functionally, and I really do like the way that the sort of target shows up on the board. I do want to show you quickly the different meeples for all of the characters. They are all unique, and they are all pretty cool looking. They are very easy to distinguish, not only by color, but by especially the shape of their mask. The other thing, again, artwork is great. Iconography is great. Let me just page through some of these other Leviathans so you can see what some of them look like. Here's the Sage. Here's the Sentinel. This is Storm. This is the Watcher. The Watcher is the only Leviathan that has managed to beat me so far on the normal difficulty. Just barely, I was one turn away from smashing the crystal, but truthfully, if I had smashed the crystal, it was blighted and it would have killed me anyway. But that was a really, really cool cinematic fight. This one's got an eyeball that opens and closes. Every time the eyeball opens, if you hit it, it closes the eye again, and it's more powerful when the eye is open. Just really, really cool. This is the Weaver. This is the last one I played just before this video, and I did manage to defeat it. But this one had webs that you got stuck in along the way that you could use to climb to different places, but You'd also get stuck and have to use extra action to get yourself out of there. Just, just really, really great artwork in this book. I'm not going to show all of them to you because I don't want to spoil them all. But suffice it to say, I do love the design of this book. I do love the design, the visual design of all of the Leviathans in the game. With that said, that's basically all I can say about the components. The box, again, is not an official box. It is just a prototype box, so I'm not even going to show that to you at this point. Maybe back up top and I'll let you know what I think about the game itself. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the playthrough. Now before I get into what I think about the game itself, there are a couple of things that I want to mention that I forgot to mention while I was at the table. And the first of those is the focus tokens. You saw at the beginning of setup I gave each of my characters a focus token, but then I never made use of them throughout the entire game simply because of the characters and the classes that I was playing. But focus tokens work such that certain cards will activate your focus token and you can then flip over your focus token, activating it to add a plus one to any ability on a card or a character ability that you trigger later on from that point. So you're basically charging up through focus your abilities and getting a more powerful ability later on. And it just worked out that in this playthrough this time, that didn't come out. So I wanted to make sure you understood what that was there for. The other thing that I didn't talk about are these injury cards here. Because I didn't take any injury, I was doing a really, really good job at avoiding them, but I just wanted to talk about them a little bit because they are an interesting component of the game. And there are a couple different kinds of injuries. Well, there are two sort of main different kinds of energy, injuries. This one here is a sort of permanent ability that either causes you something that continues to happen all the time. For example, this one here, that when you fall at the bottom of your fall, you lose one health. A couple of them here prevent you from being able to be protected from things like the blight crystals or being protected against those sort of damaging locations that you walk through from your cards. And those are these kind of cards that are just sort of going to give you something that hurts you or hinders you in some way for the rest of the game or until something happens, in which case they clear and go away. The other kind of injury cards are these injury cards here. And I'm not sure how well you can see any of this on camera, so I'm going to explain it anyway. But these cards you can see in the top corner here have a numbered value, just like the regular cards. And what's going to happen is these go into your discard. 
and then they're going to get shuffled back into your regular cards, and they're basically going to be a dead card. Not completely dead, because it does give you a three, but it's going to be a card that sort of gums up your engine, and also does something negative. So for example, this one, when you're drawn, you instantly lose one grip, meaning discard one hand. Um, this one just at the end of activation goes into discard, so it runs through your deck faster. This one, Dizzy, says when drawn from your deck, push one, so you're getting knocked around because you're dizzy from climbing. This one here, Bleeding, that really, really hurt me. I mentioned earlier that the Watcher is the only one that killed me. What killed me was this Bleeding card. I drew it, and when that card is drawn, it does one damage instantly, and it killed me because I wasn't smart and paying attention and planning for that. So I did want to bring those up, both the Focus Token and the Injury, because I didn't get a chance to show them to you in play, and they are pretty important for the game. Now, with that said, let's talk about how I feel about this game. You may have been listening to my sort of quick overview or quick description of what this game is at the intro of this video and started thinking, hmm, this sounds quite a bit like Shadow of the Colossus from PlayStation 2, I believe, many, many years ago. And you'd be absolutely right. And that's exactly what brought me to this game. I was a huge fan of Shadow of the Colossus, wandering the land, finding these giant beasts, scaling the beasts and, and taking them down in some way. Now, I do like that the twist here is that you're healing them and not killing them because, spoiler alert, there was some dark stuff going on in Shadow of the Colossus that doesn't really happen here, at least that I've seen so far. But thematically, that's sort of what this is. You are these small people trying to climb up these giant creatures and defeat them in some way. And that sort of premise had me really, really, really excited. And now having played the game, this is now my sixth or seventh time, I believe six times. I played the first five and now I played this Leviathan for you. I have to say that this completely and totally lives up to the premise. Before I talk about anything at all that I love about this game, I'm honestly going to come out and say this right here might be the best game that I play this year. And it's still very early in the year. That's how much I'm enjoying this game. It just oozes theme. It oozes character. There's not a whole lot of narrative here because they did in this sort of re-jump or re-kickstart campaign that's coming back to Kickstarter, remove some of that campaign narrative stuff from it. But there's definitely a world here. That little bit of snippet of story before and after each of the Leviathans really does pull you into the world, really does make you feel like something is going on, which makes sense since the designer is sort of such a bigger name in the sort of campaign narrative kind of writing world. And I'd love to see more of that here. But the point is, it really does pull you into the theme. It really does feel like you're supposed to be feeling, meaning climbing these giant creatures, scaling them, trying to get to these locations where crystals are, smashing the crystals without getting thrown off, without getting pummeled by the enraged creature, and so on. And it really, really, really does feel that way. And now, there's a whole lot going on here because it really is a sort of movement efficiency puzzle trying to get from one place to another while avoiding obstacles and avoiding getting hit and avoiding falling off and all of these things that you'd expect to be avoiding as you climb a giant monster trying to smash crystals on its body. And it really does shine through because each boss, each monster, each leviathan is shaped in a different way means there are different patterns of how you can climb up. Some of them you can just sort of climb all over and just deal with. Some of them have long skinny things that there's not a whole lot of stuff to hang on to. And you really got to work your way up faster. You got to work like jumping back and forth between things. And just the shape of the, the map of the Leviathan body itself really does manage to twist things up in unique ways. But that's only the very, very beginning here because each of the Leviathans you saw has five different cards, and each of those five different cards gives them different ways that they hurt you, gives them different ways that they attack you, and it might be something that's a pattern that you can avoid. It might be something that just automatically hurts you. It might have something like you saw in this collector where I can make the decision to either get hurt or trade in something important, that relic that I was returning so I didn't get hurt. There's a lot of different variability, not just in the shape of the Leviathan, but in the sort of behavior of the Leviathan, how they're trying to hurt you or harm you or just hinder your progress in a variety of different ways. The different ways that you have to hit things, right? 
I, the, the watcher that I showed you had the eye that opened and closed and it opened occasionally and every time I hit it, it closed and inside that eye there were two crystals that I had to destroy in order to be able to beat that Leviathan. So I had to really figure out this timing, leaving it open for too long hurts me more, but closing it, man, I couldn't get in there and hit. So I had to make sure every time I was in there, I hit it big so that I could do some real damage before the eye closed. There's just so much going on here, so much to play with, so much to dig into, and that's just the Leviathan. Then when you're playing, you've got a climber and you've got a class. And you're playing with at least two climbers who each have a different class. And each of those climbers has their own ability, and each of those classes has their own sort of twist on how things work. You saw me using a class this time that was sort of a free climber doing real cool climby kind of stuff, right? And the other, the other was sort of helping out his teammates and allowing lots of jumping and lots of movement but you also didn't, you saw the, the uh, sorry, the different characters, the different climbers that I used. One had these mushrooms, right, which were powerful, and there are always a little bit of mushrooms on these leviathons that give you little boosts along the way. But this guy was sort of like a mixologist, using them to his advantage, getting more advantage out of them. And then the other guy that I had was just this big sort of brick, right? He was there to deflect things and block things and take the damage and hold on tight so that when things came in, he didn't lose so many cards. He didn't lose so much grip, so he didn't fall as often. There's so much variety here. There's a guy that's a healer, or sorry, there's a class that's a healer. There are, there are just, there's a guy that's got a special sort of target reticule that goes over a spot on a map that allows people to cross over that so it can block sort of one of those damaging locations or block one of those locations that makes you lose grip, those sort of slippery locations. And you can put it there, and when you're on there, you can discard it to get one free movement. There's just all this different variety, and I'm not going to go through all of them, because part of the discovery is the fun in this game. Seeing how each of the different climbers and each of the different classes connect together and work together in different ways. Every time I've played this game, I've played with different climber and different class combinations. I've played with every climber and every class in this game, and every time I've played this game, it's felt different. Because the Leviathan changed, because the climber changed, because the class changed, and simply just because the way that the cards come out at any given time change. Sometimes I'm slowly working my way up the Leviathan, clearing everything as I get up there. Sometimes I'm racing to the top and sort of gliding back down and getting stuff on the way. And it just really, really does work really well where some of the attacks from the Leviathan make you think about how do I dodge that and is it worth dodging or is it worth sort of locking into place so that I can get this big hit before I leave that spot because the more I leave and come back and leave and come back the more enraged the, the Leviathan is becoming and the more difficult the situation becomes so sometimes it's worth it to take some damage just to get in there and sort of do some of your own damage before moving on and all of these different gears turning together just makes for such an amazing experience in this game. Now, I have played this solo two-handed. I don't play the solo mode as explained, so I can't comment on there. Basically what it's doing is it's taking two characters in one class and mixing them together and turning it into one deck. And you use the cards for taking turns for either of the characters, but you can only use the abilities for each character when you are that character. So it, it's interesting, but realistically for me, Running two hands, managing a dual-handed system in this game is not that difficult, and it really does mean something to me that I've got two unique characters climbing the cliff, and how they interact with each other really does bring out a lot of this sort of emergent gameplay and how it plays. And to that end, yes, this is a great solo game. Yes, I would play through the entire game playing every Leviathan multiple times simply as a solo game, but this is another one that I expect I don't know how much I will get it played just because I don't have a group all that often, but I think multiplayer, this one's going to shine even more because you're going to have this great sort of teamwork where each of you really does lock in yourself as a character, sort of doing the things that that character does, helping out others when needed, calling for help when you need it, and it will, I think, bring out even more of that emergent narrative as you sort of, as that character, are you doing your thing, watching all your buddies off to the side do their thing, and sort of working together to take down this giant beast. Anyway, enough said. I am really loving this game. I strongly recommend this game. If you have any sort of love for the old Shadow of the Colossus video game, if you have any interest in this sort of efficiency puzzle of movement and attack kind of puzzle, 
if you're interested in something that has a lot of variability as a cooperative game, definitely, definitely, definitely check this out. I will put a link to the Kickstarter campaign down below. If you're watching this as it goes live, it will be launching next week. Definitely keep an eye out for it. Definitely check out the campaign when it launches. I hope that this video was helpful. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, I ask as always, please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon below, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks.